not even gone on the shelves yet and managed to talk him into it. Let's go. Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to Campbelltown and today we're going to go off and try and find some rare and interesting whiskey from the weird and wonderful Campbelltown region itself. I'm actually stood in Campbelltown Harbour and well the weather is distinctly Scottish. Now this isn't the start of this trip, I had every intention of filming the rest of it but to be honest the weather just didn't really allow for it. We started in Nottingham at home, went up to Britain's highest pub Tan Hill Inn where the wind was simply biblical to be honest it was awful uh, and then we did a wild camp last night at the top of this Campbelltown Peninsula nearly ran out of fuel on the way to it had a very scary start trying to get to the petrol station and this is where you join us so yeah it's quite early in the morning still an hour and a half until the distillery shop opens I don't know whether we're going to be able to film inside or not but I'll take you on the journey see what bottles we can find and yeah do a little tour of this local area but there's plenty more other than just Springbank that we'll be going to okay so this is the entrance to the distillery they've lost the e on the distillery tiny little road tiny little road come up here there is a car park at the top of it super narrow and uh well you can see the distillery there and a horde of people waiting i assume they're waiting to, for the tours but the um because the alcohol laws in scotland the shop actually doesn't open until 10 a.m and it's currently about 22. um so i want to join that queue in a second but yeah, that's not actually the car park. It'd be nice if it was, because it's bigger. But yeah, here you go. Got some signage. And it's a Monday morning, the week before Easter. Schools aren't off, and yeah, it's already pretty ramo. So let's see what we can get inside. Right, I don't know if you can hear me or not, but it's open, six people at a time, and we are uh, eight, 10, 12, uh, 14 and 15 in the queue. So not looking great, but we'll see how we get on. Okay, I need to do a quick explanation of what kind of happened next, which I didn't do very well while I was there. So we waited in the queue for about half an hour, which wasn't too bad, but it was raining, but it was okay, it was fine. Everyone who walked in that shop in front of us walked out with boxes full of whiskey, like boxes. The, the fact that they even had that much in there to start with, actually I was quite surprised by it because simply they don't have a lot of stock every day. They do not keep a lot in because it's rare, it's... You know it's heavily wanted and so they try and limit it to make sure everyone can get something so i was surprised to see literal boxes of whiskey flying out of the door the shop also isn't very big and despite there being kind of a six at once rule in the shop when it first started by the time we got there we were at the back of the queue weirdly that was that was the whole queue for the morning rush we were right at the back of it um and kind of once we got to the front they said how many of you are there uh and there's, once they could see there was no more they were, i'll just go in so there's probably eight ten people in the shop at that point and yeah, it's not a very big place. It was absolutely rammed. The footage that you will see following this of an empty shop I actually got later in the video and a bit more about that later on as well. Now in the shop every day you can get some Springbank 10, some Springbank 15 and uh, some of the regular entries from their other distilleries so uh, Hazelburn and Kilcarran that sort of stuff um, and to be honest the Hazelburn and Kilcarran pretty much always available. The Springbank 15 in my experience never available because they only put a few bottles out a day and the 10 available but in very small numbers but so far I've never seen it not there so it's fine. There is also though something called the cage. Now Springbank's cage is something of a whiskey legend. Apparently years ago it used to be at the Caden Head shop which we go to later but now they've moved it back into the distillery shop and it holds what are called special duty paid samples. I do have one from a previous trip. Now they look like this and they're pretty bland. There's no marketing on them. It says Campbelltown malts on the top uh, and as you can see as I've blurred it out you have to put some personal information on there which is well just a bit odd it's one per person per week it is property limited stuff uh it is all cast strength though this one is 59.9 percent but yeah it's just a uh, an interesting way about doing things and as a result 
it, there's quite a lot of hype around these bottles because they are cash strengths because they're rare it's not just a regular release um so people flood in for those but weirdly the cage every time i've seen it has had a reasonable amount of stuff in it but anyway back to the main video this next section is a conversation between me and one of the staff there about what is in the cage i couldn't get any footage while i was in there because it was too busy too many people to talk to about are oh, you all right being on camera that sort of stuff so just yeah here's the conversation it's a bit muffled in places i put subtitles on this is what we got up to hey yeah uh, i'm good thanks how are you good thank you good what have we got in oh we've got some We've got some cocaine and cage bottles. It's cocaine's birthday week, so yeah. we don't normally have cocaine and cage. So yeah. we've got that. A bit different. So we've got some heavily peated fresh bourbon seven years old cocaine. Yeah. Some fresh sherry thirteen years old, and then some fresh bourbon fourteen years old cocaine as well. And the bottom, we've got some hazelburn and Waldo. So we've got some hazelburn fresh sherry eight years old, hazelburn fresh bourbon eight years old, and then Waldo fresh sherry eight years old, and hazelburn fresh bourbon six years old. Cool, okay. Uh, which was the oldest hazel burn? Um, well, they'll be eight years old. Okay. Yeah, I'll take one of those. Which is the lightest peated of the Kilcarens? I'll go between the fresh bourbon and the fortune. I'd probably maybe say the fresh sherry would be quite nice because you get a lot of sweeter notes off the yeah. fresh sherry, obviously. I would say both are cash strength okay. as well. Um, so the sherry one is sitting at 54.6 yeah. and the fresh bourbon is sitting at 56.9. Okay. Um, yeah, I will say you will get more from your the bourbon notes on there, so the oaks, and then you will get a lot of experience from the sherry. I can go for the bourbon. Okay, we're out of Springbank. That was chaos. Sorry, it's probably not a lot of footage from that because there was just people everywhere. Most of the good stuff had already gone, except for some of the cage trade things that they do it's a bit of a weird thing where you can only buy one per person per week have to put your name and your details on it yeah it's a very unique thing to this shop and um managed to get two bottles out of there so one for me and one for uh, mrs crummy beard uh, which i definitely won't be drinking obviously um but they are not actually a spring bank one's a hazel burn and one is a kill karen the kill karen i think is a 14 year old bourbon barrel and the uh hazel burn is an eight year old sherry cask so that's pretty cool i also got a generic springbank kind of mini not miniature like 35 cl bottle uh that was um one of their fresh pours although i didn't actually pour it because they had a load racked out and it was that busy and they didn't want to go through the process um and the same for a hazel burn as well so both of those are cast strength so i did get some cast strength springbank which is an absolute win um so yeah that is four or well, two full-size bottles two miniatures and I also got something else from there that is very, very cool, but we'll have to do that post this trip. So you'll see very soon. Right, we are now off to Caden Heads, which is also owned by the Springbank Distillery Group. Uh, but they didn't tend to sell their own stuff. It's an independent bottler and they've only got some pretty interesting stuff. Let's see what we can get. Signs everywhere that this is a whiskey town. And there, there is the shop. When I entered Caden Heads, I was greeted by a very helpful member of staff who gave me a full rundown of their products by location, style and everything else. There were a number of other tourists in the shop making fairly substantial purchases, so not wanting to disturb any potential sales, I just went about my business making my choices as anyone else would. However, after paying, the shop emptied out and I was permitted to get some footage of everything inside. So, we have a bounty from Caden Heads, as I'm about to get run over. I have got two bottles from Caden Heads. They had some lovely looking stuff in there. One scotch, one bourbon. The scotch was a, uh, it was a Boone Harbin port finish and, or was it sherry finish? Anyway, I'll check in a minute. Um, and a 19 year old bourbon from a Tennessee distillery that they're not allowed to say who it is. Right, back in the van, as I was saying, and I have just checked it. So it's a 13 year old Boone Harbin ruby port finish cask and a 19 year old Tennessee bourbon, straight bourbon, uh, but from an unknown distillery. Now, there are a few distilleries in Tennessee, not that many big ones. So, well, it might be quite easy to work out just based on the flavor, but the fact that it's 19 years old, 19 year old bourbon, that's, that's pretty rare, even I think in the US. So yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't pass that up. So it'll be interesting to find out what that is. We'll do a taste test on all of this stuff uh, after this video goes out, I'm sure. But anyway, next up, I'm going to Glen Scotia. 
Now I have to say the beauty of this place, and we are here, Glen Scotia, is that it was 30 seconds up the road. This place is so small, so many fantastic distilleries. So let's go in the shop to see what we can find now. Right then, back in the van. I'm sorry, the, the kind of the footage from this is probably not that interesting. The weather is so bad, I don't want to get loads of water in my phone, cameras, whatever. Uh, you can see the distillery just behind me there, just sat across the road from it. Um, and in there, it was so dark, to be honest, <laughs> trying to film was really difficult. So anyway, I did get an interesting little haul that wasn't too expensive. This was probably the best kind of selection for cost going. Actually, the single bottles in uh, Glen Scotia are more expensive than the regular stuff I think in um, uh, in Springbank uh, and in Cadenheads but obviously they have a lot more specials uh, whereas the difference between regular and special in Glen Scotia is not as, not as wide so you could probably get something special cheaper but something regular more expensive anyway, but anyway we got a good selection though because they did do some interesting little bits so first off with the real cheapies a uh, Glen Scotia Victoriana miniature. They didn't have any big bottles of this, and uh, I've been recommended this on a several occasions now, and apparently I'm really gonna like it. So really interested to try that out. I would've bought a bigger one had they had it, but sadly they did not. In addition to that, I also got a miniature of the bottle that I nearly bought in a full size, which is their 15. I couldn't get a Springbank 15. I wanted somebody's 15, don't know why. But um, actually, the, to be fair, that the big bottle of that was like 60-ish quid, which I didn't think was horrendous, but uh, it is what it is. Um, the big bottle that I did buy, however, was a distillery exclusive because as much as their regular stuff seemed like a decent price, when you go into the distillery, you want something you can't just walk down to your local whiskey shop and buy. And that is a uh, natural color, non-chilled filtered, cast strength, eight year old, first fill bourbon barrel, Glen Scotia. Uh, distilled in 2015, bottled last year, 2023. That I think is gonna be pretty tasty. And interestingly, we've got a few bourbon finished bottles today. So comparing different bourbon finished uh, Campbelltown whiskies should be pretty interesting. And finally, one thing to note when you go in here, if you go, I want one of those little bottles of the double cask, uh, the 20 CLs that they sell, it's the same price to get the full set with an extra Glen Cairn. I've just been somewhere because I wanted a Glen Cairn because I've not got any, bought two, and now I've ended up with one effectively free, which is just typical. But uh, you can't have too many Glen Cairns, I suppose. But yeah, nice little box set. The plan now is we've kind of done all of the distillery shops in Campbelltown. There is a really good independent uh, retailer on the way back north. We're going back up to Fort William after this. Uh, I say back up. We've been before. We've not been there on this trip. Um, and we're going to swing by there. We're going to go get some food first because it's kind of late morning. And we've not really had breakfast or anything. So we're going to go get an early lunch. But then I'm going to go back to Springbank because Mrs. Crummy Beard was listening in on a conversation between some other staff. And apparently they don't put all of the good stuff out in the morning. They restock in the afternoon. So it might be worth going to hang around and see what they've got in about one or two o'clock, I reckon. But anyway, that's the plan. We grabbed a bike to eat from a local bakery and headed back down to the harbour to enjoy our lunch, just as the weather started to get worse. But we couldn't stay long because it's time for a stakeout. We're back at Springbank. Any joy? Okay, so this is actually a personal collection in here, but just look at all of these. I really, really, really want, where they got it, where they got it, 12 year cast strength. I really want one of those and a bottle of the 15. These aren't for sale, sadly. All we've got down here, 13, 24, Springbrook green, look at it all. And then there's all even much older stuff. In these cases, this is literally a museum. This isn't a joke whiskey museum. This is a legitimate collection. But look at all this. The value of this is absolutely through the roof. It just goes on and on and on. It's limited 30 year, 35 year, 40, 45 year, 50 year. Absolute insanity. Look at those pots up there. 
it's more stuff for the long row down to the hazel burn an eclectic mix of miniatures as well i'll be honest this is a really cool collection just because it's not like just the expensive stuff it's every part of the range top to bottom love it i just gave a load of spiel and i wasn't recording so let's try again shall we right just been back in Springbank. Uh, bad news is no new bottles yet. Good news is almost definitely gonna be some today of the 15, which is what I really want. Only the 10 and the 15 are what they get regularly. Uh, and that's all they're gonna get today, but they're pretty confident they are gonna get some. They can't tell me when, it's just gone 12 now. It's not gonna be before one because everyone's out on lunch and it won't be any later than five because that's when they all leave. Four hour window. Problem is, Whiskey West Coast, the independent bottle shop I want to go to further north, closes at 5.30 and it's an hour away. So I really need them to get it in before four. So the challenge now is, can we wait long enough, manage to get a bottle of 15 and still get to Whiskey West Coast? That is the question. But for now, I'm just gonna chill out and uh, watch some TV on the iPad, I think. But if you've seen a load of footage now where the shop was looked dead quiet in Springbank and I said it was busy before, that's because that's footage I've just taken now because it is dead in there. So got some nice images for you. Hopefully you've seen some of those, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get back to it when they restock. And I can actually see the supply route from the warehouse. Let me show you this. Right then, I hope you can hear me because of the wind. I'm gonna have to get out of the car to this because the car kept interrupting the recording. But anyway, where that little red dot is, that is where the shipment comes out from. It just goes across the car park and into the store, which is where that building ends and the white side of the other building begins. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's hope we get something. One eternity later. We got it. We got a 15. It had not even got on the shelves yet. I managed to talk him into it. Let's go. Okay, that is an absolute score. So I've been here twice now. Both times I've come multiple trips to the distillery to try and get something other than the one allocated cage special and the regular Springbank 10. I've managed it. I've got a 15 and actually I've got two of them <laughs> and there was only four on the shelves. Now, probably, well, the, the second one, uh, I didn't know at the time. So Mrs. Crummy Beard went in and she's like, you know what, we're going to get another one, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm not buying it as a, you know, to put on to auction or anything. That is to just enjoy basically um but yeah we've got some 15 finally which is fantastic news now we're off to whiskey west coast it's a place called tarbot there's about 82 different places called tarbot in scotland so it's the one directly kind of north of campbell town on the way out of this peninsula uh, before we head to fort william i'm gonna go so we'll see what they've got might not be another whiskey purchase because i've spent a lot on whiskey today uh there'll be a full total somewhere at the end of this video it's probably hideous and i don't want to know what it is but uh yes even if we don't get whiskey they do do some decent craft beer so off to whiskey west coast <laughs> We have arrived at Whiskey West Coast. What they got? Okay, so back in the car, been into uh, Whiskey West Coast. No filming, no photos, no nothing allowed in there because they've got some pretty special stuff. I then managed to keep it sensible with two cans of uh, Isla Ales, their stout and their red rye, and uh, a bottle of Campbelltown Lock, which is about the only spring bank kind of involved product that you can actually get quite easily so i thought it'd be good to compare to the others but yes i'm to be honest absolutely knackered now we're going to drive to fort william and we'll do a proper debrief a bit later and that is where the travel portion of this video kind of ends we went up to fort william had a fantastic time i was about to say i didn't film anything else there i did i filmed a beer review at the black isle bar which has actually already been released before this video but otherwise we were just enjoying our holiday i didn't buy any more whiskey because well frankly this is an absurd amount as it is but yeah, this is all of it in no particular order. If you're wondering why I didn't show you any of the bottles with the exception of the Glen Scotia stuff uh, during the video, well, this is why. It was all well wrapped and I thought for safety's sake, best keep it wrapped up and to transport back here. But now we're gonna open it all properly. So quick rundown, you've already seen this, but the Glen Scotia um, distillery exclusive bourbon finish. Uh, this one is rocking in at 58.8%, so it is cast strength. 
a quick look at the bottle on that one. Very much a la Glen Scotia. Um, frequent viewers of this channel will notice that the studio has changed a bit, um, mainly a bit behind me here. And uh, well, that's because I bought too much whiskey and didn't have anywhere to store it. So this top shelf here, this is going to be the Campbell Town section. So let's get that rat kilt on there to start with. Of course, from Glen Scotia, we also got the miniatures and the uh, nice gift box with the glass. Um, I just wanted the bottle on that one, but the glass was effectively free, so hey, why not? All right, next up, we've got the bottle that I got from Whiskey West Coast right at the end of that video, and also a free sample. Now, this is a sample, effectively, of the same thing, Campbelltown Lock, uh, but this is a different year's version, so we can do an interesting little side-by-side -side and see how much that blend changes over time, but look, this one, I'll be honest, when I was doing the maths for this, I realised I did overpay for this bottle by about 10 quid because, well, to be honest, I just like that shot. Whiskey West Coast is very nice. Not everything in there is overpriced necessarily. And I say overpriced, this was the price I'm comparing against online retailers, which ultimately are cheaper often and they're bigger retailers as well. But I like the guy that owns it. He always have a great chat. Fantastic. Campbelltown Lock. So this is a blend um, that is done by Springbank, uh, J&A, Mitchell and Co. Um, but it's got a load of Springbank stuff in it and also some other stuff from around the Campbelltown area. So this is quite available. You can still get this. Normally 40 quid a bottle. I paid 50. But yeah, we'll compare this to some of the more premium and rare Campbelltown stuff to see how it pans out. Okay, next up we're into the Caden Heads Hall. I did get a couple of Glen Cairns in the nice little boxes from them to use out and about and in the studio and stuff, but I mean, it's just a Glen Cairn with the Caden Heads logo on it, which is, yeah, it's just nice. Right then, into the bottle. The first one from Caden Heads, which one is it? This is the Boona Harbin 13-year-old Ruby Port Cask Matured. All of their bottles look like this. You've probably noticed there is one gotten about over here on the back shelf as well. That one is a that one is a Speyside single malt uh, finishing uh, PX cask. But um, yeah, Ruby Port cask finished Boona Harbin, 13-year-old. I just really like Boona Harbin, and I thought that's going to fit that profile so nice. It's going to be super sweet, super lush, probably quite similar to that Boona Harbin 12. That's already quite cakey. This is just going to be a big amped up version of it. And then the one non-scotch. I really wasn't expecting to find uh, interesting bourbon in Campbelltown. It's actually, okay, it's a Tennessee whiskey. I, I was somewhat misled and ultimately didn't read the label for myself. That doesn't mean it's not bourbon, it just means it has been kind of filtered through charcoal one more time than bourbon normally would. But you know what, that's probably not an issue. Um, 19 years old though, that is, I feel like that's gonna be really interesting. To be honest, Caden Heads wouldn't have taken it if they didn't think it was good. Just some initial guesses on where this might be from. Well, Jack Daniels is the obvious one. It's also the one that I think is most likely to not want people to put their name on it if they didn't bottle it. Um, could be George Dickel, that's the other big one from Tennessee. But anyway, we'll give it a go and we'll find out. And then we're into the Springbank Hall, which was massive. Now, I did say I got something extra that I couldn't show you at the time. Eagle-eyed viewers have probably spotted it. That. That is an original, proper, official top cap of a whiskey barrel from Springbank. This one was done in 1989, J.A. Mitchell & Co. Springbank Single Malt. This is number 19, so I guess it's the 19th barrel from that year. Uh, Campbelltown written at the bottom of it. I just think it's an absolutely fantastic piece of artwork. I absolutely love it. It's just, yeah doing the business. But on to the whiskey itself. So, go for the small bottle first. This is another one of the hand fills and another one where they've put my details on it, which is annoying. But uh, this is a 59.3% cash strength hand fill uh, spring bank. Um, that's all it says on it, obviously with the other information omitted. But yeah, I mean, it's it's the real deal. And then the same, which if I remember is a hazel burn. Again, another cast strength, this one, 58.8. These are proper, proper pokey. Uh, but yeah, it's just their legit stuff. It's no finished, it's just OG whiskey from Springbank or Hazelburn. Looks absolutely fantastic. 
on to the big bottles. I think these two taller ones are the cage specials, which are very similar to those hand fills, but are normally finished products. Let's get into this. This is the Hazelburn Fresh Sherry Cast, 60.1% and eight years old. I mean, it looks, It look at the color on that. Obviously it's a sherry cast that's done it. It's only eight years old, but I feel like that's gonna be pretty special indeed. That's why I bought it. And then a Kilkerran Fresh Bourbon Barrel, 56.9% 14 year old. Um, less color obviously than the sherry barrel but yeah i mean it's just these things are things of beauty i've actually not opened the previous one that i showed you earlier in the video that i got last time i was i was up there um because i'll be honest i had the fear the fear i would never get any others and well that fear is gone now so we'll probably open that one pretty soon i'm gonna sit down for this these are the springbank 15s and we need to have a bit of a conversation about them but let's get them open first I have been trying to get my hands on one bottle of this without paying silly money for years and well I've done it and I've got two. Now we do need to talk about the fact that I've got two. Firstly I need to say I didn't actually buy both of these as you saw in the video I waited absolutely hours managed to look in I went in and talked to the staff we were just having a conversation about whiskey and the woman goes kind of just pulls it up from very much like this just went so you just want one of the 15? I said, yeah, she almost went, there you go. So I was thrilled. I had no, I didn't actually ask for it. I just, I think, bought them into submission talking about whiskey, to be honest. And they went, let's give him one because he clearly enjoys it, which is absolutely true. And then my other half went to use the facilities there before we started our long drive north. And she went, she made the snap decision basically and said, let's get another one now. I didn't know at that time that they only put four of these out or only got sorry got four for the day because when I went in they weren't on the shelf it wasn't until she came back with the other one that she then told me well there's only three on the shelf and this is these are two of the four effectively uh, so I kind of I felt bad to be honest not initially it was kind of was driving I was like yeah I might have robbed someone else of the privilege but at the same time when I went in first thing people were walking out with boxes of stuff and I've got no doubt that whoever got in there first bought all of the 15. So look, I'm not gonna sell it. I'm not gonna make profit on it. I'm not gonna flip it. If I were to sell it, I'd sell it at retail to someone who really wanted one. If I'm not that mad on it for some reason, I don't think that's gonna happen. I think I will be saving them for a while because I've been, as I said, to Campbelltown twice now. And the first time I got a decent haul, but not everything that I wanted. I've still not got everything that I want, of course, but well, this kind of cements a solid staple in that. Uh, and I probably won't be going again anytime soon. And if I do, it won't be for a 15. I, you know, I could have bought more of the 10 this time. I didn't because I didn't need to because I've got some. So, hey, this is where we're at. Apologies if you don't agree with it, but it's what happened. And like I say, it kind of just fell into my lap effectively. So it is what it is. 215s, of course, we're going to do proper taste tests on these, put it up against the 10, do long term tests like we're doing with the 10. Yeah, I am absolutely thrilled to have these bottles nonetheless. And just look how good they look. Something about that super rich green. I don't know what it is, but it just looks the absolute business. And yeah, I am absolutely thrilled. Now, I'm going to put these on the shelf, but it wouldn't be right to end this video without actually tasting some whiskey. We're going to open something. It's going to be a Springbank but it's not going to be the 15 just yet. Now, using the Springbank Glencairn that I picked up last time I was there, and given that I've said it's not going to be the 15, actually the only other Springbank branded thing we picked up from Springbank was this 20CL, I called it a 35 in the video, I was clearly being a bit optimistic, um, is the 20CL 59.5% cast strength Springbank, because, you know. Now, we talked earlier about things that I overpaid for. Actually, I think these minis aren't that much of a good deal. I can't tell you how much the full size ones were, but given how much the um, the, the full size bottles from the cage are, these were 25 quid a piece, which, well, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it does work out all right, but in my mind, I feel like they're a bit pricey. But anyway, let us break in to one of these. Only a small dram because this is 59. 
0.5%. I know cast strength is cast strength, but it still somehow feels absolutely absurd when you say it out loud. I mean, the legs on that, no surprise. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous looking thing. It smells like Springbank, but got that wonderful dank, damp, mildly peated touch of salinity. Very, it smells rural. It's what it smells, it really does smell very rural. Right then, let's give it a go. Cheers, happy whiskey hunting. Wow, that, okay. I was always umming and ahhing about the hand fills because they seem to have loads of them. They're always readily available. I don't know what it is. I've just never got that excited by them before. It's better than the 10, no doubt. I mean, obviously the ABV is high. It's going to feel more lush, more rich. It's probably not aged for as long, but for a small sipping experience, and it doesn't say how old it is, remarkably smooth, remarkably sweet. Still got the funk, still got the, you know, the old blankets in a wet sheep barn thing, as someone commented on one of my videos, but it is absolutely delightful. And I'm glad I've got a drink to hand because I need to tell you how much I spent on whiskey in this trip. And um, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. It's bad. I've omitted a few costs. I've omitted the beers because they just enjoyed those as holiday beers. I've omitted the glasses because eh, I could get them from anywhere at any point. I just wanted to pick some up while I was there as a memento. I've not included the price of that, which actually remarkably cheap. I want to say 35 to 50 quid. I can't remember. The different sizes were different prices, but like as a massive piece of whiskey memorabilia and artwork, bargain. That's about £741. £741 on whiskey. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. It's, I don't know why I did it. I got excited. I'm going to regret this now infinitely. I'm not, because look at it. It's up there. It looks fantastic. It tastes fantastic. It's. It was an experience. Can I justify it? I'll try to. I'll say this. Look, I don't spend a lot of money on holidays, first off. Like most people, go away, spend several hundred quid going away. We don't do that. We chuck the dogs in the van we go wild camping like it's what we do because of the dogs as a result don't spend much on holidays this is effectively my holiday money for the year in addition to that making these videos is primarily a fun thing to do but it does make me a few quid not a lot not that much for sure but i need interesting stuff to make interesting videos with and now i have a huge haul of interesting stuff just up there so yeah, if you feel like I'm an idiot and feel slightly sorry for me, then share this video around, please, because it might actually help pay for some of it. But you know what? It was a lot, but I'm treating it as a once in a lifetime thing. I'm not going to go back to Campbelltown anytime soon and spend anywhere near that. But uh, stuff just kept popping off. I like that bourbon. I'm so excited for That was the most expensive bottle, incidentally. It was more than the Springbank 15s. Um, so, you know, yeah, but 19 year old Tennessee whiskey slash bourbon can i pass that up no i couldn't because you can't buy that online it was shop only and yeah it just had to be done anyway that's my ramblings and excuses if you're gonna go to campbelltown at any point hopefully this video has been of some help and kind of give you an idea of what to expect uh and if you go to spring bank and there's not much on the shelves if you play the waiting game it can pay dividends as it did for me but yeah four bottles of the 15 per day that is wild. I don't know that that's every day, but it certainly was when I was there. Maybe they up it in peak season. I don't know. But, but just four bottles when you make the stuff seems absolutely wild to me. But it is what it is, and that is how much in demand they are. But yeah, that really is all I've got to say about it. I really, really hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it and, well, trying the uh, exploits of it. But as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't already subscribed, if you will be so kind. And I'll catch you on another whiskey adventure. Cheers.